In this fast-paced digital age, genealogy enthusiasts are constantly seeking innovative tools to unravel the mysteries of their family history in an organized way. Roots Magic introduced a groundbreaking feature that simplifies the process of tracing direct ancestors and pioneers the incorporation of cluster research. The revolutionary association feature eliminates the need for cumbersome workarounds and offers a seamless solution for inserting and managing friends, associates, neighbors, and more. If you don't know what cluster research is, be sure to check the link in the description box for two videos on that topic. By exploring the relationships between individuals who are not immediate family members, researchers can unlock hidden clues, finding missing puzzle pieces, and gain fresh perspectives on their ancestors. In the main screen, navigate to a person you'd like to add an association to. In this case, I'm going to come to this index field and type in short for the last name short. Now I have three possibilities, but what's also great is you don't always have to type in the full last name. I could actually stop at SHO and still find the shorts. In other cases, you might have so many surnames that you actually have to type a little bit more because if I only typed Geisler right there, I would have quite a few of them. But if I want George, now I only have three. So play around with the index to filter the list to the person you want. Let's go back to short and I want Francis Carlton short or Carl. Now that I've got him highlighted, in the up here right hand corner of the screen, look for the plus sign known as the add button. Seems pretty intuitive. There will be four options to choose from. Some of them are familiar. Add an individual, add a spouse, parent, child, or this new one, add association. A pop-up screen appears. Very quickly, you'll see the name of the person previously selected. You'll see several other fields where you can specify the type of association, identify the other individual involved, and you can also add details, namely dates, places, and descriptions. To create a pathway to connections, I need to select another person to link to Carl Short. So in the associate box, I'm just going to click on this field or you can click on the arrow, either will work, and this screen will pop up, this add person, add associate screen. And you can find the fan club member in the same way you would be searching for the names we just did. If the person is not yet in the database, you can come over to add new and fill that person's information in. Click OK and you'll add that new associate to the family tree. Otherwise, come down here and we're going to select a person. Carl Short was my great grandmother's fiance, but he died before they married. So I'm going to look for Townley, comma, EV. There were a lot of Townleys in my database. Here's Townley, EV for Evelyn. I'm going to click on her name, click on OK. Now that I have selected two associates, let's define their association. If I click on the association box, Roots Magic has the following predefined associations that are very common apprenticeship, classmates, employment, godparent, I like this one, grave neighbors, and more. If Carl and Eveline's relationship type was in this list, perhaps neighbors, I can click on neighbors, click select, and then I can continue filling out this form. However, they were engaged, and I don't see that on this list. So what do I do? Well, I click on new association type at the top of the screen. So in this field, hopefully I can spell it right, I will type engagement. Next, I will define the roles. I will put this version of fiance for the masculine form of the word in role one, and in role two, I'll do the feminine form of the word. But then I have a sentence template. And there is a way to get a copy of a template in order to make the gibbery gobbledygook work. 
Click OK to save this engagement. And so now I have engagement down here. But notice I don't have a sentence template. Well, instead, I'm going to come up here to Associate. I'm going to click on Edit. And then I'm going to copy and paste that template into my Notepad program. So here it appears in the Notepad program. And what I can do is type in the beginning of that sentence by replacing this to fiance of. So this person was a fiance of that person and I need to add that accent mark. Now I have the first template figured out and I can copy and paste it into the engagement sentence and then I can grab the other sentence and copy it and paste it into that sentence template and I click OK. And now when we create research reports or other reports generated by Roots Magic, they'll make the sentence for me saying the first person, role one, is the fiance and he was engaged to the other. If I didn't get the sentence right, let me know in the comment section. Click select and now I have Francis Carl is the male and Eveline is the female and they are engaged. And now I can proceed to add in more details about their engagement. Now, Carl died in 1916 and I'm not sure how long he and Eveline were engaged. So I'm gonna type in the year 1916. They were both in Columbus, Ohio, but now I want to add a description and I can go ahead and define more about their engagement and that he died and therefore they did not get married. So in the description field, I'm going to talk about how Carl and Eveline plan to marry following their engagement. However, they didn't formalize the intentions to marry as he died during their engagement. We can work on making that sentence a little better, but at least it describes what was taking place. Now I can add a couple notes, click on note. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to explain why I just simply used the year 1916 because I don't exactly know how long they were engaged. I do know that they were engaged at the time of Carl's death. Click save note, then click OK. And if I open up the profile, on Carl, notice in 1916, he was engaged to Eveline Townley and they were located in Columbus, Ohio. Not that, eh? Let's do another. Betty Burton is Carl's mother, but she appears in Eveline's family Bible and in family photos after Carl's death when Eveline had married George Geisler. So I'll not leave it to chance that future individuals will make the connection between the two women. Yes, Eveline is Betty's former future daughter-in-law, or the other way around, Betty is Eveline's former future mother-in-law. <laughs> but it didn't happen, but I still wanna establish that association. So we're going to make sure that we highlight Betty and go through the process one more time. Add association, and we're going to leave it as associates. Now I need to go look for Eveline Townley Peak. Click on her, click OK. And this time I'm not gonna really add a date. I can, I know the place is Columbus, Ohio. And then I need to write a description. Now that I've written a description of how Betty and Ava are related, we're gonna click OK. And then when I click through and scroll down, I'm going to see that there is an association between Betty and Eveline Townley Peak right there. If you need to edit, delete, or otherwise change an association, Roots Magic makes managing associations a breeze. I noticed after I put Eveline Townley Peak connected to Betty Burton, I put Francis with the wrong Eveline Townley. <laughs> I linked him to what would have been his future mother in law. <laughs> Oops. So let's go in. And we're going to double click on Carlton and open up his edit person page. 
then we're just going to highlight this event right here. And notice up here in the right, we have the box with the details about the engagement. So if I click on Eveline's name, I am actually going to put in the last name Peak Eveline, click on this one, hit select, and then click save, and I have the right couple connected together. I can also change the location, the details, and so forth. Another thing that Roots Magic allows you to do is enhance the quality of this association using sources and notes and media. How cool is that? So we could click here in source. We can go through the add sources process, which we've talked about previously on this channel, and we can strengthen the quality of that connection. We can also add media. I do have a picture of Carl and Eveline. That was their engagement picture, and I can create a link to that here as well. To emphasize, we can add depth and accuracy to our research beyond the documented family tree by adding those sources and those media and notes to the association, just like we would for family relationships. If you wanted to delete this association, all you need to do is right click on the event in the timeline, and then you're going to see two options, add a new fact, or delete the selected fact. And if you click delete selected fact, you'll get this pop-up reminder. Do you really wanna delete it? If so, click delete. If not, click cancel. And then that would be deleted. We're going to go ahead and leave that because we actually want it. Additionally, Roots Magic 9 seemingly integrates the association feature within the edit person screen, similar to any other fact. And you can add an association directly from the edit screen. You don't necessarily have to start from that pedigree view that I showed or the family group sheet view. All you have to do this time is click on the plus button at the top, which is the add fact icon. And notice now in this fact types, which we've talked about in a previous video here on this channel, there is the fact type of association. Click on that and click OK. And now we're back to that ad association window, which we've talked about in this video so far. So we're not going to go over that again. But notice you can add an associate on this view, on this view, on this view, any view in which you need to add an associate, you can do so. Linking persons in your tree that aren't family, but are integral to your research is not all that Roots Magic offers. They also offer a way for you to see all of the associations you've put into your family tree. No more getting lost people floating around the tree. You actually can start connecting these people which is pretty amazing. If you're on this view, this people tab, make sure you're on the people tab and then come up to this little icon that looks like a mind map icon of some kind. Click on that symbol and you're going to be taken to the association view and it will list all the associations you have in your family tree. I haven't added everybody, but this is a great start. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind very quickly is that you can actually sort these columns. I love that feature. So we can sort by relationships. And now all of the people who are just associates, engaged, godparent, grave neighbors, and householders, they're all grouped together. You can sort by the first person's surname, the second person's surname, the date it happened, or the location. You can also edit any person from this view. So if we wanted to edit Samuel Barton, who is the godparent of George Barton, we can click edit, go to him, and then add more associations. Now the last thing to cover is just to showcase associations in reports because it's crucial for comprehensive genealogy research. Roots Magic deliver this functionality by providing options to include your association in major reports such as narrative reports and rumor has it family group sheets. Click on publish, click on narrative report, 
and you can select your start person even if you started on someone else. In this case, I'm going to navigate to Peak Eveline, select, and now the key person is Eveline Peak. But notice there is an option to include associations or exclude associations. We're going to include the association. When you click Generate the Report, Notice that there will be sentence templates inserted into the story. So the fiance is included up here in the chronological order, but you can also see this association. Eveline was an associate of George Knott. George was Eveline's friend's, Bessie Burton's friend, and George became Eveline's friend in Columbus, Ohio, United States. So while the inclusion in sentences aren't perfect, especially depending on how you brought your notes, they're inserted into this narrative report. And just like I showed on my other channel, Write Your Family History, you can take this narrative report and put it into a text editor and then clean things up and make it read more smoothly. But the fact that you can put these associations in your narrative report starts, you can really get a sense of who people were and who they're connected to and write better genealogy, narratives, reports, stories, and so forth. If you haven't seen that video from the Write Your Family History channel, that of course will be linked in the description box below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe on your way out and then head on over to this playlist of other tips and tricks on how to better use Roots Magic.